Hello and welcome everyone to the Noble Network Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have a wonderful group of institutions ready to tell you all about their programs and campuses. Just a few housekeeping announcements from me before we get started. You may use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you today, but don't save your questions. Go ahead and get them into our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening. There's two more series after this, so make sure you take a look at what else is taking place today and jump in a few more. And this presentation, along with all of the others, are being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com forward slash noble. I'll put that link in the chat as well. Now, before I turn it over to our presenters today, we have a very quick video that's going to kick off our event. So I'm going to share that now. Welcome, Noble Juniors, to our first ever virtual college fair. My name is Dr. Aide Acosta, and I have the honor of serving as Chief College Officer of Noble. And I am thrilled to welcome you to this incredible event. We have over 3,000 juniors from our 17 schools across the city attending the fair today. Although we usually have this college fair in person, we have pivoted to ensure we can provide a safe and exciting virtual fair for all of our students and the more than 150 colleges in attendance. We have with us representatives from some great colleges and universities. I'll give you a few. My alma mater, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, Gettysburg College, UIC, Dickinson College, the College of Worcester, the University of Michigan, and a number of HBCUs, including Tennessee State University, Wiley College, and Harris Stowe State University. At Noble, our vision is to ensure that all students have equitable and positive school experiences that equip them to succeed on the path of their choice. Leading to 75% of alumni completing college. Today is another step on your path to success. This is a unique opportunity to hear directly from college reps and learn why they might be a good fit for you. Ask questions, be engaged, have fun, have a great day, enjoy your sessions and be noble. Hi, Noble Juniors. My name is Miss Metz and I am the head of schools. When I was a principal, one of my favorite events in any school year was the Network College Fair. My wish for you is that when you're meeting with reps, that you ask curious questions and you remember mentally that you are not the only one interviewing in that conversation. Certainly they are getting to understand you a little bit, but you are also interviewing them. You wanna make sure that you make a decision about your life after Noble that feels good to you. So be yourself, listen, be proud of your story, be proud of your family, be proud of your community, be proud that you live in Chicago and just be yourself. And I hope that you enjoy it and that you take full advantage of this incredible opportunity that Noble is providing you. Have fun. Hey, Noble Juniors. I am so excited to see you. I am Miss Jennifer Reed Davis, also known as Miss Reed, and I get the pleasure to serve as Noble's Chief Equity Officer. I am so excited for today for Noble to host our very first virtual college fair for our most special group of students, our juniors. I love you all. I'm so excited for you all today. I know that this day seemed like it never would get here, right? The idea of engaging and talking to our college admissions officers from all across the country because they want you, noble students, to be in their campuses. That's a big deal. I remember being a junior in high school, which was not that long ago because I am still very young. And I can recall just the anxiety and the nervousness and the energy 
all that surrounded this idea of applying to college and figuring out where I should be. And yet, I just want you to know that you should trust the process. Trust your college team, your college advisors, your school, your principal. Trust your parents, your family, the people that love you. And know that if you listen and lean in on your support system, it's all going to work out. All of the hard work that you have done so far, it's going to pay off. I believe that college really and truly is an option for each and every one of you. Your dreams are not too big. As a matter of fact, they're not big enough. So just know that we are cheering you on. We're rooting you on. We love you. Go get them. Bye, juniors. Okay. Well, after that, how can we not be excited for today's event? We are going to kick it off today by hearing from the University of Denver. Whenever you are ready, take it away. Let me get my screen up here. All right. Is that good? Looks great. Thank you so much. Excellent. Well, hello, everyone. I am so glad that you are here today and able to take part in this college fair. My name is Jen Parr Gross. I am with the University of Denver, and I am the Midwest Regional Director. So I am actually based in the Chicagoland area, and I work with all the students in the Midwest. So I'm a little biased towards my Midwest kids. But let me tell you a little bit about the University of Denver. DU itself is a medium-sized private national liberal arts university. We're a, we're a private university dedicated to the public good. We are located in Denver, Colorado, which is a city that's about 2.5 million in population. So when you're traveling to Denver, it's about a two hour flight from Chicago or a 16 hour drive by car. The campus itself is eight miles south of downtown. Denver is the number two tech city in the United States. It's one of the top cities for young adults, one of the healthiest cities in the US, and we have all the government agencies located there. Our backyard is the Rocky Mountains, so you can't get any better than that. Over 70% of DU students complete internships. So having such a robust city contributes to our students' opportunities to participate in internships, not only in Denver, but also worldwide. In 2020, US News and World Report ranked DU 80th among national universities. Denver itself boasts over 300 days of sunshine a year, a lot more than California and Florida. Snow, when it snows in Denver, it typically melts by noon or one o'clock. It's the oddest thing. And because of the altitude, there's low to no humidity. So that means there's no mosquitoes and very few bugs and almost always a good hair day. We have nearly 14,000 total students, including our graduate and PhD students, and 5,700 of those students are undergraduate. That's our focus. We have a 12 to one student faculty ratio and our average class size is 22. You're looking at 99% of our undergraduate classes being taught by professors. So DU itself is a medium sized school with small school attributes. We are an NCAA division one sports school. So we have 18 different collegiate sports, including a new one, our women's triathlete program. 29% of our students are from Colorado. So this means most of our students are from out of state. Nearly 20% of last year's newly enrolled first year students were from the Midwest. Freshmen and sophomores live on campus with guaranteed housing and campus is a walkable 150 acres. DU is a residential campus with a little bit of urban flair. So if Chipotle is a requirement, the first one ever built is three blocks off campus. Students get around the whole Denver metropolitan area for free by utilizing the light rail and the bus system we have. And this includes trips out to the airport. You'll find over 100 different academic areas of study at DU. Business happens to be our largest major and it offers five new four plus one grad undergrad programs through the Daniels College of Business. This includes finance, business analytics, management, marketing, and real estate in the built environment. The next largest is gonna be our biological sciences and that includes areas like ecology, biodiversity, pre-med and sustainability and a new major, physiology and health and disease and a new minor, human health science systems. Engineering and computer science also has one of the oldest gaming programs in the US and the international studies program at DU is ranked sixth in the world. And it includes areas like public policy, diplomacy, homeland security and not-for-profit. The Lamont School of Music 
even during a pandemic, has offered over 300 performances this year, and jazz studies is one of its fortes. They just announced a new minor in ethnomusicology, which is an opportunity to study music in and as culture. I would round it out with the remaining majors being psychology, communications, journalism media studies, and also we're one of 16 universities that offers a six-year law degree. Of our June 2019 graduates, 90% of them were employed within six months of graduation or in that next level of education. So as you're learning about colleges, I want to point out three things that make DU really unique. One is we operate on our academic calendar, which is the quarter system. Students take three out of four quarters with summer being optional. Quarters are 10 weeks long, and we happen to have a six week break from Thanksgiving until January 4th. During your quarter, you're taking four to five classes. You're gonna do 12 to 18 classes for the year with the three quarters. This means that you are taking 30% more classes on a quarter system than you would if you were a student on a semester system. This is great for undecided students, which is about 33% of our incoming freshman class. And it also is great for complementing your major with some other areas. It's not uncommon for our students to take multiples and get double majors, majors and double minors, majors, minors, and concentration. Another area you'll find at DU is over 200 of our undergraduates are going to participate in research every year. And one opportunity is with our Partners in Scholarship program. Undergrads present a proposal to faculty and receive funding to work on their project for the year with a faculty assistant. Your funding, your project and research is funded, you publish your findings, and you present at a symposium all at the undergrad level. The second or the third area I think that's really important is study abroad. Every school has a study abroad program, but the Sherrington Global Scholars Program at the University of Denver allows a student to study abroad at no additional cost than what they pay to attend to you for that quarter. You have to have a 3.0 GPA and you qualify. You keep all of your financial aid and scholarships and DU covers transportation, visa, passports. You study abroad for a semester, even though you are on a quarter system. So you leave in mid-August and come home in December from your study abroad program. This this also allows our students to be able to get that cross-cultural experience. 77% of our students study abroad in 52 countries, every place but Antarctica. We accept both the Common App and the Pioneer application, and we've been test optional going on our third year. We review everything holistically, so it's not cut and dry with numbers. Early action is non-binding. It is, has a deadline of November 1 with decisions coming out in December. Um, our regular decision deadline is non-binding, and that is January 15th deadline with decisions released at the end of February. Students are automatically considered for merit scholarships, and they range from $10,000 to $30,000 per year for four years, whether you apply with a test or without. So make sure you grab that QR code at the top of the screen there. That will get you more information on the University of, of Denver. And my advice is keep your balance. I wish you the best in your college search, and I hope to find DU among your choices. Thank you. Wonderful. What a great way to get us started today. Thank you so much, the University of Denver. Okay, we're going to hear now from Kettering University. Take it away when you're ready. All righty, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Slash, uh, I know it's that time of day where we're transitioning out of the morning over in Chicago into the afternoon. So uh, nice to meet everyone. Uh, happy you're here today, and, and it's a pleasure to, to talk with you about Kettering University. Uh, my name is Nathan Cobra, and I wear two hats at Kettering. I'm an admissions counselor and co-op manager. So we are a co-op school, and so I work with students who are interested in attending Kettering, and I also work with a wide variety of employers that are in Illinois specifically, but also Wisconsin, Indiana, and Ohio as well. So I'm excited to, to share a little bit about Kettering University. If you haven't heard of it or don't know where it's located, it's in Flint, Michigan. So pretty centrally located uh, in the state. It's about an hour from uh, the capital in Lansing and about an hour and a half, two hours from, from Detroit. Um, but a little bit about Kettering's kind of history and legacy. Um, we were founded as General Motors Institute in 1919. And so we do have strong ties to the automotive industry. Uh, but we are an engineering and STEM school, as well as uh, a business management uh, opportunity. So we have a school of management and then College of Engineering, as well as College of Arts and Sciences. I'm going to jump ahead and then I'll circle back to the, the size there. But here's the majors while I'm talking about academics. We have nine academic programs at Kettering. Our largest is the mechanical engineering program. 
Now there's a variety of concentrations. For example, in computer science, you can have a concentration in cybersecurity, um, a concentration in mechanical engineering could be machine design. And so there's a wide variety of concentrations that are listed on our, our website as well. Uh, but those are our nine majors. Uh, mechanical engineering is actually about 50% of our students at Kettering University. And then the next three or four in terms of uh, numbers are um, electrical and computer engineering, computer science, and then industrial and chemical engineering. And then don't miss the management major there as well for those who are interested in, in the business world. Um, let me jump back to the size. So Kettering is a small school. I mentioned an engineering and STEM oriented institution, uh, but students uh, enrolled is about 2,300. Um, and that's all on campus. And most of those students are undergraduate. We just have a few hundred in, in terms of graduate students. So a small focused uh, personalized uh, you know, college experience for you. Um, in regards to our academic calendar, if you don't hear anything else from my presentation, this is what I want you to, to tune in for. Um, our academic calendar at Kettering is really, really unique. I mentioned that we're a co-op school. And so what that means is that students uh, work <laughs> as well as go to school, um, not at the same time. <laughs> and that's what this table outlines. So our, our you know, 2,300 students are broken down into A and B section. So A section will start at school in July and then go to their co-op work term at a company that we partner with, then come back for school and then go to their co-op work term in April again. So every three months, it's a, it's a four, it's a quarter system, four three month terms. Every three months, the students are rotating from school to work, school to work. And they do that throughout their entire four to five years with us at Kettering. So that's a really unique experience. It starts freshman year. Um, the co-op uh, experiences are paid. Um, so I wanna jump into those details here. Um, in terms of hourly rate, it averages anywhere from 14 to $20 an hour that the students are making while they're on co-op. And that you know, varies based on what year in school, it varies based on what company, it might vary based on what major and so on and so forth. Um, in total, if you do some quick math, so, so six months for five years, you know, will be two and a half years of experience. Um, paid professional experience when you graduate from Kettering, in addition to getting an, undergr an undergraduate engineering degree. And then in total, the wages often are somewhere between forty dollars and $70,000 that a student earns while they're in college at these co-op work experiences. So here's a brief sampling of our employment partners. Um, one that's close to home or close to, to the Chicagoland area is uh, Navistar International. Um, and they are a co-op partner site with about 15 Kettering students working there um, in rotations, uh, A and B section. <clears throat> so here's our average salary. I point this out because I mentioned the two and a half years of work experience. Some of our graduates are pursuing mid-level engineering jobs. They're not pursuing entry level because they have two years of experience in addition to a college degree. So it's really, really beneficial and, and also plays into, you know, what you might be able to make when you graduate from Kettering. Um, campus life, we are a completely residential campus. Um, we have a residence hall for freshmen and some, you know, upperclassmen live in the, the residence hall. And then we have apartments and houses surrounding the campus community. And then about 40% of our student body um, is involved with Greek life. And so they can live in those fraternity and sorority houses as well. Um, in terms of sports and clubs, um, pretty traditional. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit different or unique for us is that we don't have any varsity athletic teams. So we don't work with the NCAA or NAIA. All of our sports are intramural and club sports. Um, they do compete regionally and, and nationally as well. Um, and then we have a, a wide variety of student clubs and organizations. Um, something that does compete uh, at a varsity level is eSports. And these are the five teams that we currently sponsor. And then we also have five um, SAE clubs, which is the Society of Automotive Engineers. So one last thing I wanna highlight is um, our scholarships as I'm running out of time here. Um, so admission requirements around a 3.7 GPA. Um, we look closely at math and science coursework. And then here's a brief uh, sampling of some of our scholarships that we offer as well. So. Look forward to answering any questions you all might have in the, the chat here and uh, look forward to connecting with many of you in the future. Have a great day.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Kettering University. As St. Mary's University of Minnesota gets ready, I want to remind everyone that that Q&A function is ready. So whenever you have questions for any and all of our panelists, it can be about their institutions or the college search process, go ahead and put them in the Q&A. Okay, St. Mary's University of Minnesota, take us away. Good morning, Noble Juniors. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Wow, you've already heard from two great institutions. My name is Brenda Jones. I am the Associate Regional Director of Admissions with St. Mary's University of Minnesota. So I'm going to spend a few minutes this morning giving you some highlights about St. Mary's. So St. Mary's is actually, oh, I'm like <laughs> trying to advance my PowerPoint and I'm having a little trouble here. So shoot. Hang on, let me see. I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna reshare here. Okay, sorry about that <laughs> technical glitch. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this to work. There we go. Okay, so St. Mary's University of Minnesota is located in Winona, Minnesota, way down in the southeast corner of the state. It is actually located on the Mississippi River, and next to the Mississippi River are really high hills, which we refer to as the bluffs. So as far as landscape is concerned, it's going to look a lot different than it does in Chicago. However, we are only about a five hour drive from Chicago. So I think one of the one of the highlights of St. Mary's and one of the unique things about St. Mary's is all of the outdoor recreation that is available to the students and the population of Winona. So the town of Winona is about a little more than 25,000 um, permanent residents. Within the town of Winona are three colleges. So St. Mary's University of Minnesota is one of those, along with Winona State University. And then we have a technical school in the town. Between those three universities, they bring an additional about 12,000 students to the town of Winona every year. So the students in Winona actually make up about a quarter of the population. So it really is a college town. There are fun things to do for college students uh, along with the outdoor recreation that is available to you. There are lots of restaurants, um, cute little coffee shops, sandwich shops. There is a um, seven screen movie theater and on Tuesday nights they feature five, $5 movies for college students along with free popcorn. And we have a fabulous art museum in, um, in Winona. So these are just some pictures of um, Winona and the campus itself. So as I said, there's um, the bluffs next to the Mississippi River, which provide lots of outdoor recreation as far as cross-country skiing, hiking, rock climbing, um, sledding. Our students love to sled in the wintertime. Um, there's the Mississippi River, but we also have two lakes in town. So lots of water um, recreation. So paddle boards, canoes, kayaking. Uh, you can even rent bikes down by the lakes. Uh, there's a path around the lake that you can bike on, rollerblade on, fishing equipment is available. Um, like I said, the downtown um, provides you with lots of different um, cafes and sandwich shops and coffee shops, places to go and study along with listening to live music. And I mentioned before that we have a fabulous art museum in, in Winona. So St. Mary's University of Minnesota is an undergraduate campus in the town of Winona. It is about 1,100 undergraduate students. The female to male ratio is about 50-50 depending on the year. And we do have a graduate campus, but that campus is located up in the Twin Cities. So all students on our campus in Winona are working towards that first bachelor's degree. About 85% of our students live on campus. As you can see in that picture at the top, we have about 150 acres uh, designated for our academic buildings, our residence halls, our uh, athletic playing fields. But then we do own 
about 300 acres up in the bluff. So again, lots of um, hiking. Uh, we have a disc golf course on campus, a trout stream, but we are within walking distance to um, many shops and grocery stores and restaurants. We are division three NCAA athletics, and we and about a third of our students do participate um, in those athletic teams. We do have some intramural sports and some unique club sports like ultimate frisbee, water polo, Nordic skiing, even ballroom dancing. We do have a very strong theater and arts program. So um, if you are interested in being involved in that, lots of opportunities to do that. And if you're not involved in the arts or athletics, there are lots of other student-led organizations that you can belong to. As far as academics, when you apply to St. Mary's, you will be admitted into the major of your choice with the exception of our three plus two physician's assistant program, which we do in partnership with Mayo Clinic. That is a selective program. And we are also introducing a nursing major this fall, which will also be a little bit more selective. As far as financial aid, we give scholarships that range from $18,000 to $25,000. Every student will receive one of those merit scholarships along with an out-of-state grant that you can, that you can um, automatically apply to your financial aid. And we also give visit opportunities to get scholarships. We are featured um, on all of the social media accounts and I am the admissions counselor that would work directly with you. I look forward to meeting you in the future. Um, we are doing on-campus in-person visits right now, so we'd love to have you come visit. Enjoy your day. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for that. Another fantastic presentation, St. Mary's University of Minnesota. Okay, turning it over now to Elon University, whenever you are ready. Here we go. Thank you for that patience. I was trying to find the screen to share. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Caroline Fernandez. I am an admissions counselor at Elon. I have ties to the Midwest, so I'm really glad that I can connect with you all today. Um, I graduated from Elon a few years back. I studied journalism and communications, but I also had minors in business, Spanish, and geography. Um, so Elon is the kind of place where you can come knowing um, what you want to do, but also have the flexibility to build your curriculum to what works best for you. I know that some of you all right now being a junior in high school, you might have one idea, you might have no ideas. Um, so a liberal arts core, as some of these other schools have already talked about, um, it, it is really quite nice. And we'll dive into that in just a few minutes. So first, what is Elon and where is Elon? Um, we are about a medium-sized university, about uh, 6,000 students in North Carolina. So a bit warmer than um, the Midwest. And we are in a suburban type setting. We are not rural in the middle of nowhere, um, but we're not in a big metropolitan area. It's more of that middle ground. There's everything that a college student needs in the town that we're in. There's Target, Best Buy, TJ Maxx, um, big box shops and restaurants, and also lots of cute and quaint independent coffee shops and restaurants too. 80% of our students are from out of state. And that's one thing that surprises a lot of prospective students. And one thing that I really like to emphasize, because that means that coming from Illinois, you're not going to be the only one out of state. Actually, you'll be in the majority. So your friends will come from um, across the country and around the world. I mentioned how I'm an Elon alumna. I grew up and went to high school in Florida. And one year, my other roommates were from Los Angeles, Kansas, and Connecticut, myself being from Florida. We were all friends, we all chose to live together, but it's really neat just to have that diversity of background and thought and whatnot. 
And looking at the map, as you can see, geographically, um, we're near some bigger cities. Greensboro is about 30 minutes from us, um, close to Greensboro is Wake Forest University. And then if you head towards Raleigh, Durham, about 45 minutes away, you'll hit UNC Chapel Hill, Duke University, NC State. On the weekends, students are still on campus. It is not a suitcase campus, but there are lots of different areas to go hiking, um, kayaking. Um, if you want to head to the mountains or the beach, it's about two and a half hours in either direction. Uh, so Elon is a busy, active place of community during the week, but also on the weekends. Let's look at Elon by the numbers quickly. We have four undergraduate schools in um, arts and sciences. So any of you all interested in psychology, political science, biology, we have a really strong school of communication. So those of you who might wanna be um, news reporters or um, work in PR or marketing, you can find that there. And we have a business school um, sending students to top accounting firms and um, data analytics, just to name a few majors. Um, and then also we have a really strong school of education. So um, many more majors than I just mentioned, but that was just to give you um, a, a, a little glimpse into that. A small student to faculty ratio and our average class size is um, nice and small, but we cap all of our classes at 33 students. So even your um, intro to psych class, your first year English class will have no more than 33 students total. I want to talk quickly, I'm cognizant of time, but I want to talk quickly about these Elon experiences. Um, these are things that you'll find on college campuses across the country. But what makes these unique at Elon is the fact that we believe in these experiences so much so that it's required for students to complete at least two credits of these before they graduate. Um, so not only will it be required for you to have a certain GPA, a certain number of classes, but maybe also by the time you graduate, you've been abroad once or twice, you've done an internship, you've done research. Elon is proud to be um, ranked and awarded um, top in the country for our abroad program. We have partnerships on every continent except for Antarctica, um, and we send approximately 60% um, um, of our students, um, if not more, every year to go abroad. As far as life at Elon, again, I mentioned it's busy clubs, organizations ranging from fraternity, sorority life, service, club, intramural sports. We're proud to be division one across all areas for athletics. We play other exciting fun schools up and down the East Coast like um, Villanova, James Madison, William & Mary, College of Charleston. And the food actually is good. That might sound very simple and silly and basic, but um, I get into these you know, bigger, higher topics a lot and students will just ask, well, How's the food and where will I live? What will that look like? Um, so to answer your question, um, Elon partners with a company called Harvest Table, whose main goal is to bring locally sourced organic options to college campuses. So um, you're in good hands with the food. It is not mystery meat. Um, you'll be well fed and, and well taken care of in a lot of different ways. Okay, so to wrap it up in just a moment, here are some dates and deadlines to keep in mind. Uh, it seems far away, the fall, uh, but it'll be here before you know it. We um, have early action, non-binding, also early decision. That's if you are able to perhaps visit Elon, it is your very top choice. We'd love for you to commit. The final time to apply is January 10th, and we do have a lot of different scholarships and honors programs that you can apply for by January 15th. So thank you again so much for listening for your time. I'll be taking questions in the chat. Um, email us, reach out. We are having tours on campus. So if, you, if you're able, we'd love to see you at Elon um, and follow us on social media. We have a lot of student takeovers and ways to get a sense of Elon in yet another virtual way. But the best, of course, is to see us on campus. So if you're able, we'd, we'd, love, we'd love to welcome you to Elon. So thank you again and I'm wishing you all the very best. Fantastic. Thank you, Elon University. It is hard to get all of this important information in in six 
uh, minutes, but our presenters are doing a phenomenal job. I want to remind everyone one more time that that Q&A function is open, so make sure you get those questions in. But right now, we are going to turn it over to Elmhurst University when you're ready. Sorry, I feel like we're all getting our version of tech issues. So um, I think, uh, yeah, so I can go ahead and share my screen, right? Fantastic. So give me one moment to get that started. Here, screen. All right, so sorry about that. So I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, here it is, perfect. All right, so uh, let's, hopefully that goes. All right, you all see that? Elmhurst University, can you see that? All right, awesome. So um, thank you for all uh, for having me. Um, my name is uh, Adrian uh, Dominguez. I am a senior counselor uh, for uh, until 4 p.m. today. This is actually my last day. So um, uh, you're getting my last presentation ever. Um, but uh, I wanted to let you know about um, my uh, the school that I work for right now. Uh, it's Elmhurst University. Um, and I'll go into it real quick. Um, try to stick to the seven or six minutes. So uh, we were founded in 1871 and became Elmhurst University in July 2020. So we were Elmhurst College for the longest time, and then we just became Elmhurst University. Um, 28 acres of certified arboretum. So if anyone's interested in trees and wildlife, we have um, labeled and uh, diverse uh, species of trees on campus. So total student enrollment stands at 3,500 with undergrad standing at around 2,900. Um, this is one of the largest classes that Elmhurst has ever had in terms of total numbers. So um, a lot of representation in terms of students, but um, it's still a small school in, in terms of total numbers. So we pride ourselves in being a small school with, um, you know, uh, a small school with a high touch, high, uh, high tech um, style of lear uh, learning with a real practical experience too. Um, so Elmhurst, Illinois, uh, very close to uh, the city. It's about 30 minutes directly west. Um, the closest suburb or area that, uh, if you're familiar with Illinois, would be Melrose Park. Um, but it's very close. Um, it's a seven minute walk to the downtown Elmhurst area, which is a nice little uh, bird with your typical um, Chipotle, Buffalo Wild Wings type of selection. There's tons to do there, so you won't be bored at Elmhurst. And if for some reason, if you happen to be, there is actually a metro station right on campus. So um, while we are outside of the city, we still have a strong connection to it. And as a uh, as the representation for the city for the last, um, I want to say six years or so, I can tell you that it's a strong asset to have a train there um, instead of having to drive into the city all the time. So um, Elmhurst has a unique position of being in a uh, place where you can consider it away from home, but it's still close to home if you're from the city. Um, and if you're looking to get away and you're from Illinois, um, it is just far away enough and kind of in its own little place so that it does feel like you're uh, leaving, uh, going away from the the campus and you're away from home. So um, it has kind of the best of both worlds in that regard. Um, so like I said, we're trained right away. Um, you can do this for all these cool stuff, the reasons that they say here, but um, you can also do it for um, internship reasons, which is very common amongst our students. We will do that for business. Um, we'll do it for um, uh, art, uh, music, tons of reasons why uh, we have, uh, you know, to get onto the train and head on down. So, but these are kind of the more, um, uh, Tourist here, fun ones. Um, so, what do you? What is uh, the characteristic of an Elmhurst University uh, education? And this is kind of uh, where my piece of advice comes from: is that you want to kind of look at all the schools and kind of feel what fits best. Because obviously, money is a big concern. But um, this is four years, and it's a long time to kind of not like where you're at. So, uh, we want you to be sure. Um, so, this is kind of what you can expect as a student at Elmhurst. Liberal arts education, which basically means we're trying to make sure that you can function in any situation. Um, my, fa my favorite example is being a nurse. If you're a nurse and you, you're great technically, you know all of your dosages and all that stuff, but you don't know how to deal with people, you're not going to get hired. So, uh, we want to make sure that you're well-rounded um, and it's student-centered. So, we want to make sure that we are addressing students. Um, to their specific needs. Um, this is the reason why we're a small school. We want students to have the ability to talk to their professors one-on-one. -on -one. Um, professors will know your situation. They'll know if you skip class. They'll know uh, everything about you um, because they're just, you know, 
uh, they're going to be uh, very, uh, very front and center in your in your classes. In fact, we don't have any student teaching assistance. It's all professor based. Um, global awareness this is part of our core values, and we want to make sure that students um, are uh, familiar and cognizant of um, cultures outside of the U.S. to be able to be a global citizen. That's one of the key topics here that we like to use is global citizen. And then key to all of this, and the main driver behind Elmhurst is uh, professional development, practical experience. Um, a lot of people tend to think about majors, um, and I like to tell them that unless you're going into something uh, licensed, like nursing or education, you can be pretty open with your major. Um, it's really the experiences that you're building that's going to really propel you forward. So if you are wanting to be a doctor, you can be an English major. That's fine. Um, but you just need to make sure that you're doing the right prerequisites for the classes that you'll need for advanced degrees. You'll need to know where you're going in terms of just like what field you want to practice in if you have one. So there are a lot of considerations to make, but we have um, a lot of good resources here that will help students figure that out while they're here. So you won't be doing it alone. And that's kind of the key to a smaller school. Um, so I mentioned uh, majors. Um, we still have a bunch of majors, 70 majors, uh, 50 plus minors. A lot of our majors can be uh, turned into minors. Um, the most popular majors at our school are listed here. Business is typically the first, um, followed by psychology. We have really popular nursing and education programs. Psych is, uh, I mentioned psych, sorry, biology is very popular because we also have a lot of people that want to be um, uh, doctors. Um, or any sort of medical field, um, we have a really strong, like we're not uh, a niche school in terms of like we have a certain thing that we're known for, but medicals, medical fields and students that are hopeful for anything in that regard are health professions are a really strong um, like rising thing. And then speech pathology is a really good one here. We have a clinic on site. So, um, and a master's program here. So if you're interested in that, you have 17 master's programs and CSD is one of them. So uh, you'll be able to do your internship right here on campus. All right, and uh, as I mentioned, the six, uh, 16 professional, um, pre-professional programs, uh, like I said, uh, medicine, dentistry, a lot of these don't hinge on a specific major, um, but you do need to know what you're doing in terms of getting prepared for your uh, further schooling. You need to know what uh, to do for the prerequisites so that you don't have to take extra classes once you graduate. Um, we wanna make sure that you're kind of getting on the right path. And that's whether it's a pre-professional program for you know stuff that we don't have on campus versus the master's programs that we do have on campus. So. Uh, we will get you prepared for whichever direction you want to go. So in regards to how that gets done, 158 full-time faculty with 82% holding their highest degree um, with a 13 to 1 student to teacher ratio. So again, this all screams, you know, smaller amount of students or professors. Um, the average classroom size is 18, and that's typically your um, uh, like freshman first year classes are going to be very uh, heavy. Um, and then maybe your uh, popular majors, but most majors, you'll probably start seeing eight to 10 students, something smaller. Number of courses taught by teaching assistants, zero. Everything is professor-based. Another cool uh, university, I'm so sorry, we're at a minute over and we have to get to the next university. Do you want to advance to your final slide with your contact information so that people can reach out with additional questions? Yeah, sure. Um, you can reach me, uh, well, like I said, I'm uh, not gonna be uh, continuing at the college, but you can reach my uh, the person that's taking over, his name is Christian Barron. Um, you can go uh, for uh, yeah, just his contact information is there. And if you want admissions information, you can feel free to ask me questions. Um, we're pretty much uh, free to apply. Um, we're not on Common App, but we have our own. And then we are test optional for 2021. Scholarships are automatic and um, you don't have to apply for them. They're self-renewing. Perfect. Thank you so much, Elmhurst University. Okay, closing us out now, Clark University, take it away. Okie dokie. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate your time. Excited to share some um, insight into Clark University. So a little bit of Clark 101. Um, Clark was established in 1843, and we have around 1,000 students ranging from undergraduate to graduate students. And the students at Clark consistently state it's the people in the community that they love the most. We truly are a welcoming uh, college community with a family feel. And then Clark is a private Catholic university with a beautiful campus situated on a bluff overlooking the mighty Mississippi River in downtown Dubuque. And with that, we'll just take a minute to talk about our beautiful city. So Dubuque is just a short four hour trip away from downtown Chicago. And then Dubuque is a small city with big city feels. The population of Dubuque is just shy of 58,000. 
And then if you enjoy the outdoors, there are many options uh, for hiking, biking, and even skiing at Sundown Mountain. And then there are many colleges in Dubuque, so you definitely get a college town vibe, which is really nice. And then Dubuque is a safe community, and it, is re and it really embraces its college population. And then the city of Dubuque has many things to offer um, when you need a break from your studies. And then speaking of studies, Clark offers over 50 majors and minors, 11 pre-professional programs, and six graduate degrees. And the graduate degrees are the Doctorate of Physical Therapy, Doctorate of Nurse Practitioner, Masters of Social Work, Masters of Education, Master of Business Administration, and our newest Masters of Athletic Training. Our popular programs are Business, Health Sciences, Education, and Fine Arts. If you are still unsure, our academic structure is flexible and allows for you to try a few different classes to see what major may suit you best. And then while academics is number one for our students, they do like to de-stress and enjoy campus life as well. Clark has a wide variety of about 30 clubs and organizations on campus, plus student-run activities happening all the time. Some club Clubs provide entertainment, um, such as music talent, hypnotist, dance marathon, CAB, which is Clark Activities Board. Others are based in academics. So biology club, teachers for tomorrow, psychology club. And these ones focus on building up resumes and gaining more experience in their chosen field. And there are some based in social justice and host advocacy and awareness events, such as the Black Student Union and LGBTQIA plus Alliance. And then we do have opportunities for students to participate in drama productions and musical ensembles, both vocal and instrumental. There are even renewable scholarships available for students who participate in these fine art areas. And then we also have health and wellness opportunities for students like yoga, meditation, and stress relieving activities around finals. And then Clark has 21 intercollegiate athletic teams. We are an NAIA athletic institution, which means that if you are a student athlete at Clark, you will receive an athletic scholarship. Um, of course, all of these athletic scholarships are up to the coach's discretion. Um, if you are interested in playing in a sport at Clark, then we recommend that you go onto our website and fill out a recruit me form. And then a Clark education is a great value and we wanna help you afford all the opportunities I just reviewed with you. 100% of our students receive financial aid. And in order to help with the cost of tuition, we offer several types of scholarships and grants. One of these scholarships is for students such as yourself attending a Noble Network Charter School where we offer three renewable $5,000 scholarships that will be added on top of the other aid from the university. Our graduates are employed or furthering their education at the rate of 98%, and they leave Clark with the skills that help them pivot should life take them in a different direction than their major. And then juniors, our application will go live on June 1st. Um, our application is free, non-binding, and it takes about 10 minutes to complete. We give preference to students with a 2.5 cumulative GPA, and then we are test optional, meaning that if you would like to submit your test scores, you can. And then we do review each file individually. So with that, we look forward to working with you and we hope to see your applications this summer. Um, if you'd like more information about the university, I'm gonna drop my information in the chat. Feel free to reach out. Um, if you'd like to sit on a class or anything else, um, I'm here to help you. So good luck with your search and uh, have a great weekend. Awesome, what a wonderful way to close this out, Clark University. Thank you so much for all of this information. Thank you to all of our panelists for helping us learn about these programs. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. A reminder, this is one of many events happening. You've got two more sessions taking place immediately after this. So go check out some additional institutions. And then within about a week, you will be able to find the recording of this event and all the others at strivescan.com forward slash noble. And last but not least, when you close your screen today, you're going to have a very quick four question survey. And we would love for you to give us any information you can about that. All right, everyone, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the event. Take care, bye-bye.